Welcome to video number six in our series where we build the ultimate AI operating system. We're doing all this on Linux Mint and we're using nothing but open source tools. We're not sending any data to big tech. It's all run locally. And oh yeah, you don't even need a GPU to get any of this done. If you're new around here and you haven't been following along, I would highly encourage you to subscribe, hit that like button, but also hop back and watch this playlist from the beginning so you can follow along step by step. Today, we are installing AudioCraft. This is gonna give us the ability to make our own music and even sound effects by using simple text prompts. This is quite the long video, so make sure you've got some coffee or your favorite beverage and you're ready to pay attention because there's gonna be a lot of commands, but I'm gonna walk you through everything step by step. So let's jump right in. All right, first thing we need to do is download Miniconda today. So head on over to that URL in the description for Miniconda. Once your browser loads up here, go ahead and click on Mini conda installer for linux this should take you to the downloads page scroll down you're going to have some options here if you're following along you're going to want to use mini conda 3 linux 64 bit give that a second to complete the download and then you can close out of the browser hop into a terminal I'm gonna zoom this guy in for you. All right, now we're gonna CD into our downloads directory, which is where Conda was downloaded. Now you're gonna do a bash and then mini Conda, the name of that shell script. You can tab complete that. Once you hit that, you do have to scroll to the bottom of that and agree to their terms. So just type in yes, and that will start the installation of mini Conda. Give this a second to complete and we'll be right back. All right, that is done. Now we can clear off the screen. Now you're gonna do a Conda dash dash help just to verify the install. And as you see here, it says Conda command not found. That's okay. We're going to fix that right now. All right. So go ahead and do a nano and then tilde forward slash dash bash RC. Scroll all the way to the bottom and we're going to insert one new line here. Do an export space path equals tilde forward slash mini conda three forward slash bin colon dollar sign path. Go ahead and hit control O to save that control X to exit. And now one more command we need to do is a source space tilde forward slash dot bash rc hit enter now if we do a conda dash dash help we see that it is a recognized command so we added that to the path and now it sees it as a basically like an environmental variable all right now let's do a conda space create dash in space audio craft so we're going to create and we're going to use python equals 3.9 for this. So we're going to create a new Conda environment and we're going to tell it to use Python 3.9. If you don't have 3.9, you should if you were following along. Uh, again, go back to the previous videos and make sure you watch all those. Proceed, say yes, and this will download everything we need for this Conda environment. All right, give this just a second here to complete and then we'll come back when it's done. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and do a Conda space activate space audio craft and that's going to fail because the first time you install conda you do have to do a conda space in it and that's going to initialize conda you only have to do that once it's going to create some entries into some different system files so don't worry about running that every time you start linux all right now that we've run the conda in it we do need to close this current shell as it says there and reopen a new terminal all right we've got our new terminal open now all right let's go ahead and run conda space activate space audio craft. All right, now you see we have our audio craft conda environment that precedes our prompt there. So now we can start doing our commands, pip space install space ffmpeg. All right, so let's cd into the AI directory. Again, if you guys have been following along, you have this and it's already packed with quite a few tools. So you're gonna run, wanna run that git clone. Uh, I started this before, so I do need to remove my audio craft directory. I did that offline, so you guys shouldn't have an audio craft directory. So once I remove that, I'll go ahead and do a git clone. And again, I'm gonna give you that GitHub URL in the description, or you can just pause and write that down. Once that's done, CD into the audio craft directory that's created when you do the git clone. And then from there, we're gonna run, uh, let's take a look at LS. So we do see some requirements. So let's do a Python space forward slash M space pip space install dash R space requirements text. That'll take a few minutes here, guys. It'll run through and install all of those requirements that are listed out in the requirements.txt file. So let's give this a second to complete. We'll be right back. All right, that is done. All right, our next command, we're going to actually run this. So we're going to do Python space dash M space demos dot music gen underscore app. And that will launch our application. As you see here, it's going to be running on port 7860. So it's basically going to run in a browser. This is going to be a, a Gradio or Gradio based application. So if we look at this, this, we have music gen installed now the first time you do run this any model you select it's gonna go and download that model and then from then on all of the um, 
following times that you launch this and do a prompt, it'll be a lot faster. But just know the first time you run it, it does have to download the model. So if we look at some of these models here, uh, I would recommend using the small model, especially if you're going no GPU. Melody though does allow you to provide a audio file along with your text prompt. So if you want to use something as a reference file, but in this case, let's just do small. And that gives us everything we need to do a text prompt and then turn that into a music file. So I'm gonna use small. And I just did a prompt here, a bluegrass ban banjo song. I'm gonna hit submit and that will take some time. Again, the first time you run it, it does need to download that entire model. But after, you know, the next time you run it, even if you close and open the app again, you'll already have that model installed so you're ready to go. So I did fast forward this quite a bit, uh, but be prepared to do some waiting there, grab another coffee and come back. Once that is done, it'll go ahead and generate that file. So let's hear what it sounds like. It's not terrible. <laughs> So you can obviously do a lot of things with that to make that better. Um, I highly recommend you guys checking out some of the reference sites that give you example prompts and things like that. All right, so now we're gonna do a Conda. We're gonna close our terminal, come back in, do a Conda activate audio craft. So now we're back into the audio craft Conda environment. And now we're gonna do a git space fetch space origin space pull forward slash 185 forward slash head colon PR 185. So I already have that, but you guys are gonna need to run that the first time that you run the audio gen. And then the next one is git space checkout space PR 185. So as you see, I've already done that before. That's fine. Just wanted to make sure you guys have those commands. You only need to run those once. We're gonna set this all up to run automatically with a desktop shortcut at the end of this. So just stick around. All right, so now we can try to run the audio gen. So Python space four slash M space demos dot audio gen underscore app give this a second and we should have a hyperlink to click on there for AudioGen. All right, so if we click on that hyperlink there, it should launch AudioGen for us. And there it is. This is very similar to MusicGen. Uh, there's only one model, so you don't have to worry about selecting a model here, but you can do, you can also try to create music here, but this is meant to create uh, other things as well, such as sound effects. So I'm gonna do the sound effect of a shotgun being cocked back. Now, these aren't always great, but if you play around with this enough, and again, I highly encourage you guys to look at some uh, reference sites where they give really good examples of prompts that have yielded some nice output, right? So then you can kind of play off them. Similar to Stable Diffusion, wouldn't recommend trying to create your own from the get-go. Feel free to do so, but um, you may get frustrated with kind of poor results. But yeah, go ahead and look up some examples and then play off of those. So again, first time you run this, it's gonna download the entire model. Don't worry about that, it's only the first time. Even if you reboot, everything's gonna be there. The next time you launch this, it'll be much quicker. So once this finishes, we'll go ahead and listen to our shotgun. So that sounded more like a shotgun being shot. That sounds like a shot. <laughs> so again, you probably have to play around with these prompts, but uh, that's what we got from that one. It did sound like a gun. Now I'm doing a shotgun being loaded, see if we get any different results. Not quite. Kind of sounded like a machine gun there. <laughs> a three round burst, but hey, let's try another one. All right, we'll do an engine revving this time. Yeah, sounds like an engine kind of revving. Again, you gotta be more descriptive and really learn how to prompt. Like prompt engineering, again, is a real thing. Here's a site though, and there's a lot of these out there where they give you some examples. So that sounded a lot cooler. So I would say those are some pretty good examples, especially the music one sounded pretty decent for being created just off a of text prompt. But again, encourage you guys to check those out. There's a lot of sites out there. Just start Googling it. There'll be examples everywhere. Music gen, audio gen, prompt examples. All right, so we can control C just to kill this and do a Conda deactivate when you're done. And that will take you out of that Conda environment. 
you do see that we have the base that's going to be on by default. I'm going to show you guys how to shut that off if you don't always want that base activated. So we can do conda space config space dash dash set space auto activate auto underscore activate underscore base space false. And now when you open a new terminal by default, that base will not be on. You will have to activate a conda environment for, to have conda active. So as you see there, this terminal no longer has base at the beginning. But if we do a conda activate audio craft, that will again activate our conda environment for audio craft. So let's do a Python space forward slash M and then we'll run the demos dot music gen underscore app again, just to show you how much faster this is gonna load up without having to download those models. So right away we get our URL, we can click on that to launch it. And as long as we choose that same model again, the small model that we used the first time, we shouldn't have to download anything again and we should get a song a whole lot faster here. So I'm just gonna do a very short song. Let's try epic 80s rock song. And right away, you see there's no downloading of any models. It starts the processing right away. I did fast forward a little bit, but still this only took, I think maybe 45 seconds or less than a minute. I mean, it's not terrible for a five second duration there. And given the very vague description and using the small model, also no GPU, keep that in mind too. But once again, I encourage you guys to check out those example prompts. They've got some really good ones out there, um, like lo-fi, synth pads, Japanese flutes. For some reason, those ones always sound really good on AI. But yeah, check out all the examples out there on the internet, guys. All right, so we close that out. We relaunch our terminal. We see there's no conda action going on, so that's clean. Let's CD back into our AI audio craft directory, and we can conda activate our environment once again. And there's our audio craft. I, this may seem a little redundant. I just wanna make sure you guys understand how to get out of the conda environments, reactivate the conda environments, and also give you a demonstration on how the models are in place and we're not having to relaunch those. So let's go ahead and run the audio gen app again. And we'll walk through the similar demonstration where right away we get our URL, we can launch that. And with this one, there's only one model. So definitely don't have to download the model again. And we'll just try to do a dog barking and see how long this takes. We'll decrease that duration there a little bit. I was playing off of a example I saw online, so I'm trying to match some of those settings. We'll see how good this comes out. All right, so we submitted it. There's no downloading of model there, and this won't take terribly long. I think it did take, I don't know, a couple minutes or so. It seems like music gen is faster than audio gen. Okay, that wasn't great, but it was a dog barking. Uh, most of it was just silence and then he barked twice there. So for uh, eight second duration, I only got two barks, but it is what it is. Again, play around with those prompts. Uh, check the reference prompts online. You can do a ton of stuff with this. Okay, now that we have that all working, we don't want to have to come in here command line every single time. So let's do what we've been doing through the series and make an easy button. So go ahead and create a launch underscore music gen dot sh using nano. And then we're going to modify this bash script or create it. So hashtag exclamation point, excuse me, forward slash bin forward slash bash. Next line will be source space tilde forward slash mini conda three forward slash Etsy forward slash profile dot D forward slash conda dot sh. And then you're going to CD to tilde forward slash AI forward slash audio craft. Next line will be conda activate audio craft. Next line is gonna be Python dash M, excuse me, Python space dash M space demos dot music gen underscore app. Control O, enter, control X to exit. And then we're gonna do a chmod space plus X space launch music gen dot SH. That's gonna give that the permissions it needs to go ahead and launch. All right, now we're gonna do a nano space tilde forward slash desktop forward slash music gen dot desktop. This is gonna be our desktop icon. So this will essentially call that shell script or bash script. All right, now anytime we create a new desktop icon or desktop shortcut in Linux, we have to do the following. So in square brackets, desktop space entry. And then the next line will be version equals 1.0. Next line will be name equals music gen. Some of these are flexible. Uh, comment equals launch space music gen. Exec, this is the one that really counts here. So forward slash home, forward slash IT unicorn. In my case, if you have a different username, plug that in. Forward slash, forward slash AI, forward slash audio craft, forward slash launch underscore music gen dot SH. So again, we're calling that bash script via the desktop icon. All right, next line is icon equals, and for now we'll just use a baked in one, utilities hyphen terminal. I'll show you guys how to change that later. 
terminal equals true in this case because I do want that terminal to pop up when I launch this. Type equals applications. And then the last line here will be categories equals utilities. Utility, excuse me, and finish that with a semicolon. All right, now we need to chmod the desktop file, add that X permission to make it executable. So we'll do a chmod space plus X space tilde forward slash desktop forward slash music gen dot desktop. And there's our application or our desktop icon, I should say. Double click that, give it a second, it will launch a terminal. And there you go, voila. Now you have your hyperlink right in the terminal. Just hold down control and click on that. And now you've got music gen right at your fingertips. The reason I like the terminal back there too, guys, is if you ever run into any errors or anything like that, um, you're gonna be able to see it right in the terminal. And also if the port ever changes, we don't have to worry about that because it's just gonna give us that hyperlink right in the terminal. Hold down control and click on that and it's gonna launch it no matter what. All right, so now for music or for audio gen, we're gonna just take a shortcut and we're gonna copy the bash script for music gen. And we're gonna copy that to a new bash script called launch underscore audio gen dot sh. And because we're lazy, we're also gonna, no, nah, we're, we're smart, not lazy. We're gonna copy the desktop icon and copy that to the desktop and call this one audiogen.desktop. And once those are copied, we'll just use nano to go in and modify the copies of those to make sure that they are pointing to audiogen and not music gen. Do a nano and then launch underscore audiogen.sh. And all we need to change here really is the uh, Python dash M music gen, we'll change that to audio gen. So Python space four slash M demos dot audio gen underscore app. And now instead of launching music gen, this bash script will launch audio gen. So control O enter, control X to exit. Now we need to modify that desktop file. So let's do a nano space tilde forward slash desktop forward slash audio gen dot desktop. And in here we need to modify the, it's not necessary, but I highly recommend you modify the name or you're gonna have two icons of the same name. Uh, comment, I would also modify. So put audio gen instead of music gen. And then the one that really matters is the exec line. So change that from launch underscore music gen to launch underscore audio gen dot sh. That should do it. So go ahead and do a control O enter, control X to exit. These already have the plus X, so no need to chmod since we copied them, those permissions are intact. So now you see you have audio, audio gen desktop shortcut. Double click that, terminal fires up, you got your URL, hold down control, click that guy, boom, audio gen. So there you go. Just make sure our music gen still working. Yep, no issues there. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I think that's a whole lot easier than having to come to the command line, activate your conda environment, do all that stuff every time you launch it. So for good measure, let's reboot the OS and make sure when we come back into Linux Mint, our desktop icons are still there and working as anticipated. I'm sure they will be, but as a good sysadmin does, let's check our work. All right, now that we're logged back in, let's just check and make sure audio gen is still working from that desktop shortcut. So give that just a second, terminal comes right up. And there you have your URL, hold down control and click that guy. Boom, audio gen. All right, let's test music gen as well. Hold down control, click your URL. Boom goes the dynamite, music gen. So that's it guys, hope you enjoyed this video. This is a quick way to get AudioCraft set up and give you an easy button so you have those desktop icons, just click them and then click URLs and you have the ability to create music and sound effects very easily, locally. No need for a GPU, no need to send your data over the wire to big tech or anything like that. You got it all right here on Linux Mint. All right, guys, hope you've been following along with the series. If you have, you've got a pretty cool small Swiss Army knife so far of local AI tools. Please, if you haven't done so, subscribe to the channel, hit that thumbs up button, and stay tuned because I've got a lot more cool stuff on the way. All right, guys, till the next video, have a good one. Everyone take care.